Revelation chapter 17, and we'll continue reading verse 9. So as you might know, this system is referring to the Roman Catholic Church. That's what Revelation 17 is referring to about Babylon. However, there are people who disagree. They do not believe that the Roman Catholic Church is going to be the one where it will be considered as Babylon that God will judge. Some of them will say that it's referring to Jerusalem. Now, uh, I think that that could be a good strong case where it could be Jerusalem. However, that is not scriptural. That is doctrinally wrong. That is doctrinally wrong. You might say, why is that? Because if you look at chapter 18, <clears throat> chapter 18, and you read verse 21, chapter 18 and verse 21, the Bible shows over there that the great city shall be found no more. If you look at the very next verse, it says no more singing, etc. Why, if that's Jerusalem, that's wrong, because if you read the book of Jeremiah and Isaiah, the great city Jerusalem, God is going to have, them, have the people sing, and it's going to reign forever. And the government is going to last forever, actually, over there. So that's why it cannot be referring to Jerusalem. Okay, then, uh, what else could it be referring to? So then, other people would say that it is referring to America. Now, you might say, why is it referring to America? The reason why, now, a lot, some of you might laugh about that, but actually what they do is that they dig up stuff online on what people would say, and then by digging up online what people would say, they found out that Washington, D.C., uh, a lot of the stuff, interestingly, matches, a lot of the things, interestingly, matches with... Uh, what Revelation 17 and 18 describes. Now, we saw so much on Revelation 17, and pretty soon in 18 eventually, where the Roman Catholic Church is undoubtedly described. There are just too many descriptions for that, right? However, if you actually look at Washington, D.C., a lot of things can be described there. Now, I think one of the things that's pretty plain <clears throat> about Rome being Babylon is the seven hills, right? They also argue Washington, D.C. consists of seven hills. And because of its masonry roots and, its, and et cetera, they mentioned that it will be more so Washington, D.C. Now, uh, later on in this study, I'm going to show you more and more things why the evidence in Revelation 17 18 has to point Roman Catholic Church. The descriptions match a lot more with Catholic Church than Washington, D.C., to be honest. You might say, why are there so many descriptions similar to Washington, D.C., then, at Revelation 17 and 18? The reason why is because Washington, D.C. is a copycat, a daughter yeah. of the mother. Yeah. The Roman Catholic Church is considered to be the mother church, mother of harlots. Washington, D.C. is an imitation. It's one of its daughters. But that's the same reason why Jerusalem is also similar. Mm -hmm. Re Revelation 17 and 18 and some of the descriptions is because it's the daughter of Babylon. It's the daughter of the Roman Catholic Church. As a matter of fact, let me shock you even more. So let me show you some interesting things concerning about the city of Seven Hills. If you're thinking it's only Washington, D.C. and Rome, you're actually wrong. Yeah. There are so many. Didn't you know that the city of seven hills so it the title city of seven hills is not referred officially to washington dc it's actually rome historically yeah. His, that's a historical fact but washington dc has seven hills yeah but it's not titled that mm -hmm. just like many other cities who have seven hills yeah. and imitated rome you might say really yeah in africa uh you have ibadan nigeria who bragged itself with seven hills, Kampala, Uganda, and the hills are Mengo, Lubaga, Nabarembe, Old Kampala, Kibuli, Nakasero, and Makeriri. So I don't know if I pronounced those things right, but Yaounde, Cameroon, also has seven hills. Al and guess what? In the Americas, interestingly, they say Albany, New York. 
consisted of seven hills as well. Athens, Texas also consisted it. Asuncion, Paraguay, Chicontepec, Mexico, whose name is Nahuatl uh, for on seven hills. So if I mispronounce it, mispr uh, mispronounced it, I apologize. Cincinnati, Ohio, but now it uh, encompassed more than seven. Ellicott City, Maryland, Kernersville, North Carolina, Ecuador, uh, Nevada City, California, built upon Aristocracy Hill, American Hill, Piety Hill, Prospect Hill, Wet Hill, Cement Hill, and Lost Hill. And then Lynchburg, Virginia, which College Hill, Garland Hill, Daniels Hill, Federal Hill, Diamond Hill, White Rock Hill, Franklin Hill. You also have Richmond, Virginia as well, so with uh, Union Hill, Churchill, Council Chamber Hill, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then, believe it or not, there is a Rome, Georgia, mm, interestingly. And then you know about the Guidestones, right? Mm, so anyway, a lot of interesting stuff. They also have the seven hills of Seattle. And then they have Victoria, Argentina. Asia also has it, where Bhopal, India. Now here's something interesting. Jerusalem, right? One of the daughters. Seven hills are Mount Scorpus, Mount Olivet, Mount of Corruption, uh, Mount Ophel, which is known as the original Mount Zion, supposedly, the new Mount Zion and the hill on which the Antonia Fortress was built. Uh, you know what's also interestingly, uh, what's also interesting for one of the daughters, not just Jerusalem, but Mecca. Mecca, Ooh. Saudi Arabia is supposedly known as that one as well. You know what's also interesting? And we are going to come to this country later soon. Tehran, Iran. Kind of not a surprise, actually. Kind of not a surprise, actually. Uh, what's very interesting is that Saddam Hussein, he also tried to revive Babylon, but we're going to come to that later on. I'm going to show that later on. Europe has it as well. You got one in England, France, Norway. So there's a lot of cities and countries, not just Washington, D.C. So there's no doubt there are daughters. It's not just one particular city. There's so many daughters, but there is one mother. And we're going to continue later on and show the Roman Catholic Church definitely fits the bill more strongly than Washington, D.C. I'm, I'm going to show that uh, more and more. Now, for some of you who are curious about Washington, D.C., here are some interesting things about why, it's, why Washington, D.C. is more of a daughter of Rome rather than the official uh, Babylon. Because it's copycatted from Rome. Yeah. So... One of the interesting things is that Washington, D.C.'s original name was actually uh, Rome, Maryland, yep. supposedly. Wow. And it was a branch of the Potomac River. But the Potomac River was uh, supposed to be tributary uh, to the Tiber Creek, to the Tiber Creek, which is the Tiber River in Rome. And Washington, D.C. has seven hills, Capitol Hill, Meridian Hill, Floral Hills, Forest Hills, Hillbrook, Hillcrex, and Knox Hill, supposedly. That's why you see more of this pyramid-shaped structure of the elites, where the Roman Catholic Church is a mother, but everybody is a daughter, having their own kingdoms and their own powers. See, that makes it very, very interesting, actually. All right, let's return to Revelation 17. We just scratched the surface, friend. Yeah. We just scratched the surface. We're going to come across more things over here, all right? All right. So we got the seven hills over here. Now let's look at some more things concerning about this whore and the beast that she's riding on. Verse 10. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. Okay, so in other words, there are seven kings. Okay, seven, five fallen, one is, so one of them is still going, all right, one of them is still going, and the other is not yet come. So it's future. So this guy is future, so we'll put it down here. Past, present tense one, the other one will be future. We got that so far? All right, if we got that so far, here's another thing. If this is talking about seven kings, this directly matches. If this is representing 
the beast as Satan, it matches with Revelation 12. See that? Because Revelation chapter 12, you can go back there. I'm not going to read it. But if you go back there, Revelation chapter 12 and verse 3, Revelation chapter 12, verse 3, if you recall, so I'm not going to really explain, if you recall that seven-headed dragon is different uh, from the Antichrist with the ten horns. What's the difference? This seven-headed dragon has seven crowns on the seven heads. The Antichrist has ten crowns on the ten horns, okay, representing kings. This proves then, this verse, that the beast is not referring to the Antichrist beast, but the dragon, the red dragon, Satan. Why? Because of seven kings. See that? Okay, so this proves once more that verse 10 is talking about the seven-headed dragon over here. So this is all referring to the seven-headed dragon over here. If these are seven kings, then we got to find out who the five fallen are. Now, could some of you probably recall what the five kings are? Hmm. Well, let's review. We mentioned over here before about five kings from this seven-headed dragon. So let me draw this real quickly about the seven-headed dragon over here. One was referring to Nebuchadnezzar, okay? That was one. The other one was referring to Nebuchadnezzar. Nimrod, Nimrod. So Nimrod is referring to Babylon. If I were to go in order, then let me do it in order. So first is Nimrod. The second would be Pharaoh, Egypt. with Nimrod being Babel. Now these two I'm putting as names. The reason why is because they have the same kingdom. Babel, Babylon, actually. So the rest of them, I'll try to put them as countries. Let me move it over here because I'm getting too high and maybe the people won't be able to see it online. So. I'm moving the camera now. So you're no, it's okay. I'll move it over here. Okay, we well. got to make sure it doesn't go above the rim, right? So... All right, so then the other one over here, we cover Egypt. Next one is Assyria, so Sennacherib. The next one over here would be referring to Nebuchadnezzar Babylon, but I already wrote that out, so we'll skip him. Next one would be Cyrus of Persia. It could be Cyrus or it could be Darius. The next one would be referring to Greece. And then the last one is Rome. So that would be officially, that would officially be seven. Now look at this. This is not going to match because remember, five is past tense, correct? Yeah. Okay. If 5 is past tense over here, okay, 5 are fallen, past tense. Okay, we can agree with that. These 5, it was long ago at the past, so it didn't happen. Wait a minute. Present tense, Greece, that don't make sense. One shall be in the future. Okay, this one can make sense. The reason why is, uh, but there is still confusion because didn't Rome pass away, right, at the past? So we can, so I'll cover this a little more too. All right, so let's uh, explain some of the things over here. Now, Dr. Ruckman, how he explains this seven-headed dragon system with these past tense, present tense, future tense, he goes this way. He mentions over here that in order to make all of these things past tense, what we could do is that we can combine these two together. You might say, why? Because they share the same kingdom, Babylon. So because they qualify, uh, remember, the, 
If you recall in our study of Revelation 12, the heads uh, is representing kings and kingdoms together. Kings and kingdoms together. So it's an empire. So what he does is that he combines these together. So combining these two together, counting it as one, two, three, four, five. So then Greece would be past tense then. So thus qualifying Greece as past tense. If Greece joins for past tense, one is. So then Rome will be present tense. Can that work? You mentioned it can work for future pastor. So uh, why can it work for present tense too? The reason why is because the Roman Empire, it was operating at the past as pagan Rome through the Catholic Church system through current events in the past 2,000 years of history, and in the future tribulation, it will continue, see? So whether you put this present tense or uh, <clears throat> future tense, both can work present here. Uh, but we uh, remember now, we got we to gotta put a future tense, right? I mean, if you look at the verse, right? Remember, this is counted as one, so this is not uh, two heads. This should be one head, actually. If this is counted as one head, and it will be known as Babylon, not split as Nebuchadnezzar, not split as Nebuchadnezzar and Nimrod. So let's put Babylon here. Okay, so then one, two, three, four, five, right? Five fallen, one is Rome, and then a future head, future head. So some of you who've attended my study about the seven-headed dragon and ten-horned antichrist, some of you might recall this. So what I teach over here is that this one would be referring to the antichrist. And this is future. I thought you said that the Antichrist will be Roman power. Yes. But you got to understand that the Antichrist kingdom was working all the way during present time, even to future. It is the unofficial version of the Antichrist at present. But in the future, it will be the official version. You made that up. No. Look at the book of 1 John. So keep your hand here. And then we got to look at 1 John. And then we got to look, go through this soon. That way I can show you all the more neat stuff, right, that you want to look at. So there's a lot more neat stuff that I want to show you. Open your Bibles to the book of 1 John. And then we're going to look at uh, chapter 2, chapter 2. And we're going to look at verse 18, chapter 2 and verse 18. Now look what John says. Little children, it is the last time. That's like the end time, right? Tribulation future tense. End days. And as ye have heard, what? That Antichrist shall come. Future, right? So that's the official Antichrist in the future. But John recognizes that there are unofficial versions of the Antichrist at present. Because keep reading. Even now, see present tense, are there many what? Antichrist. Whereby we know that is the last time. Why? Because you had famous Great Awakening revival preachers and Protestant reformers who pointed to the Pope at the Vatican and said, you're the Antichrist. See that? So throughout all that present time, the Roman leaders in power were known as Antichrist. But then they're just the unofficial versions of the Antichrist. The official guy who's going to join in their ranks, the next Pope that's going to come out, the next Roman leader, he's going to come out and he'll be the official Antichrist like this. Bow, right? That's his weapon, a bow. Okay, let's return to our main text here. Revelation 17. Okay, let's continue reading verse 10. And when he cometh, okay, so this future guy comes, right? 
he must continue a short space. So notice that this future king who's going to be coming, he's going to continue only just a short space of time. That's the thing. He's not going to rule forever. Why? Because the Antichrist reign is really going to be a short time compared to Jesus Christ who's going to reign forever and ever. So during the standard teaching of seven-year tribulation, that's not a long time. It's only at best seven. See, 